Okay, so this lecture I would call hypothesis testing. So I want to start with an example. Let's say that uh, a person right now is working on medicine that will reduce how long it takes uh, a person to get over a cold, okay? So let's say, based on current research, that the population average for the amount of time it takes you to get over a cold is, say, five days, okay? So this person is working on medicine that he or she believes will reduce the duration of a cold, so less than five days. So the current average is five days, but he or she, you know, they're making medicine and they think it's gonna be less than five days if you take the medicine, okay? So what happens? They get a bunch of samples of people that start to get a cold, they administer the medicine, and they get results from those samples, okay? And then the question is, is the cold medicine effective, okay? So there's a lot of ways to answer that. So hopefully with our hypothesis testing, it's gonna tell us whether we accept that, yeah, we think the medicine's working, or we're not sure, there's not enough evidence, so we're gonna reject it, okay? All right, so the first step in any hypothesis test is to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So null hypothesis is N-U-L-L. And this is abbreviated H-O or h not. And then we also have what's called the alternative hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis, different books do it differently. I believe our book uses H1, but it's uh, also equally likely to see HA in some books, HA, okay? So your very first step in any hypothesis test is to correctly state the HO and H1, okay? So for the example that I just gave with the cold, um, I said that the average time it takes for people to get over a cold is five days, okay? And this person's developing medicine that he or she thinks is gonna decrease how long it takes for them to get over the cold, all right? So for that particular setup, we're doing a test for the mean amount of time to get over a cold. So in your setup, you're gonna have mu, the population mean, okay? Now, I know we're just getting started on this, but what I want you to realize is a couple of things. The person believes that it's gonna be less than five days if you use the medicine, okay? So there's a couple of things. The way that I do hypothesis tests is whatever goes here, the exact opposite goes here. So we're gonna put greater than or equal to five, okay? And this is whoever is working on their medicine, this is that person's claim. That if you use my medicine, it's gonna take you less than five days to get over the cold, okay? A couple of things that I want you to start to memorize, and that is, there is always an equal sign with HO, okay? So there, no matter what, there's always an equal sign. So it could be greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or just flat out equal to, okay? But there's always an equal sign here. And then this guy is opposite this guy, okay? So those are two things that you wanna to start to memorize right now, okay? Okay, let's do another example. All right, example two, an engineer believes the mean number of defects can be decreased in a manufacturing process of compact discs by using robots instead of humans. The mean number of defects per 1,000 is currently 18. Okay, so let's, let's break that down into just one sentence. So example two, so again, I'll read it. The engineer believes that the mean number of defects can be decreased in the manufacturing process. Okay, so what is the hypothesis here? This engineer believes that he or she can decrease the mean number of defects, and the current mean number of defects is 18, okay? So very similar to the last hypothesis test, the belief here is if we use robots instead of humans, it's gonna be less than the average. 
So it's going to be less than 18. And this is the engineer's claim. Okay? And then the alternative, or the null, is going to be greater than or equal to. Okay? Because he or she believes that if you use robots instead of humans, the mean number of defects will decrease. It will be less than the current. Example number two. A psychologist feels that playing music during a test will change the results of the test. The psychologist is not sure whether the grades will be higher or lower. In the past, the mean test score was 73. Okay? So a psychologist feels that playing music will change the results. Not sure whether it will be higher or lower. In the past, the mean score was 73. Okay, so let's do that one. Example three. What is the psychologist's belief? What do they think is going to happen? Change the results. Not sure higher or lower, but change the results, right? So this one is they believe it's going to be not equal to the current average of 73. Okay? So the current average on this test is 73. Psychologist believes playing music will change the results, so it's going to not be 73 anymore. So this is like a psychologist claim. Okay? And let's do one more before we start talking about the next steps. A textbook manufacturer believes the average cost of a textbook is at most $50. Average cost of a textbook at most fifty dollars. That's what the textbook manufacturer believes. The average cost of a textbook is at most fifty. All right. What is the inequality that goes with at most? At most is what? Less than or equal to, right? At most. So the, the textbook claim is here, at most 50. Why does it have to go with HO? Because of the equal sign. Because the equal sign, right? So we have to start memorizing there's always an equal with HO. And this is the claim here. OK, so I know this is all completely new, and we're just kind of baby stepping through it. But that is the first kind of domino okay, that you have to get correct, because everything goes from there. OK? All right, so here's what happens. When you finish step one, you have three possibilities. There's only three ways that HO and H1 can be. Okay? So it's possible that this was greater than or equal to, and then this would have had to be less than. This might have been less than or equal to, and this would have had to be greater than. And this might simply just be equal to, and then this would have to be not equal to. Okay? Now, so this is step one. If the alternative hypothesis is less than, this is what we call a left tail test. Okay, so again, we're just starting to memorize things. If the alternative hypothesis is less than, less than left tail, okay, less than left tail. If the alternative hypothesis is greater than, that is a right tail test. Okay, and then in the third possibility, if it's not equal to, if it's equals versus not equals, this is going to be a two-tailed test. And that's all completely based on the alternative hypothesis. If the alternative is less than, left tail. Greater than, 
right tail. Not equals two tails. Okay, and that tells us what type of pest it is. Left tail, right tail, or two tails. Okay, next step. I'm just gonna use a normal distribution because the first hypothesis test we use is gonna be normal distribution. But this will change as we learn more and more hypothesis tests, depending on what distribution we're utilizing. So, if it is a left tail pest, okay, we're gonna shade in some area in the left tail. And that area that we're gonna shade in is alpha. Okay, and we've seen alpha before with confidence intervals. And then we're gonna mark off this region, calling that CV, which stands for critical value. And then this shaded region here is called the critical region. Critical, also called rejection region. Okay, so a lot of things just happen. You're gonna have a specific value alpha. That's gonna be the total area of the left tail. It's marked off by CV, which stands for critical value. This shaded area is called the critical region or the rejection region, okay? If it is a right tail test, you're gonna have area in your right tail. That's gonna call, be marked CV. This area is alpha, and that is my rejection or critical region. Okay. If you have a two-tail test, as the name implies, you're going to have two tails, two critical values, and since alpha is always the total area of your shaded region, how much is going to be in each of these? If alpha is the total area, how much am I going to have left in both of those? Alpha over two. Alpha over two, right? Just like confidence intervals. Okay. Those are your three possibilities. Left tailed, you have area in the left tail, that's my CV. Right tail test, you have alpha area in the right tail, and that marks your CV. If it's a two tail test, you have critical values on both the left and right, and half of alpha in both tails. Okay? So, you have step one, state your hypothesis test, H O H O. Step two, determine if it's left tailed, right tailed, or two tailed, and draw your picture draw where the critical values are, okay? And that'll be based on alpha. So they'll give you alpha. They'll be like, oh, alpha's 0.01 or 0.05 or something like that. Okay, then step three, you do what's called the TV. TV stands for test value. TV, test value. Okay? So you'll have a formula for your test value in every hypothesis test. And then what's gonna happen is that test value is gonna drop somewhere on your graph, okay? And there's basically two things that can happen. Either your test value falls not in the rejection region, it falls out here in the non-critical region, or your test value falls in the rejection region, okay? So somewhere on this graph, you're gonna drop down a test value wherever it is based on the formula, okay? And then it brings us to step four. If your test value falls in the critical or rejection region, then you're gonna reject HO, reject the null hypothesis. If your test value does not fall in the rejection region, then you're not gonna reject HO, okay? So you have two things. You either reject the null hypothesis, or you do not reject the null hypothesis. These are your two outcomes. Reject the null hypothesis, or you do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay? And we do that based on where the testing falls? Yes. If the test value is in the rejection region, then you reject the null hypothesis. If the test value, if this is your picture and it's not in the rejection region, then you do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay? That's why the shaded region is often referred to as the rejection region, because it tells you if you're going to reject or not. And then finally, step five, uh, what happened in your own words? Okay? So you can't go to some person on the street and say, well, it fell in the critical region at 10%, so do not reject HO, <laughs> right? That makes no, they won't understand what that means. So you'll say, what happened in your own words?
you know what, based on the testing that we've done, it does look like this medicine works. It appears that it does reduce the duration of the cold. Okay? That would be something that people would understand. All right. We're just going to kind of stumble through one test all the way through. If you guys can understand it, then great. I've achieved my goal for today. Okay? And again, we're doing hypothesis testing from here on out. So it's so crucial that you go back, review this, and make sure that you can do this. Okay? So let's do our first hypothesis test. First out of 100. Okay, the first hypothesis test that I'm going to teach you is the Z test for the mean. Okay? So the first hypothesis test is a Z test for the mean. And every time I introduce a new hypothesis test, there's two things I need to tell you. Number one, what distribution are we going to use? Well, if it's called the Z test, what distribution do you think we're using? <laughs> the Z distribution, right? The standard normal. <coughs> And the second question that we have anytime we get introduced to a new hypothesis test is what is the TV formula? Okay? What is the test value formula? So I need to tell you what the test value formula is for your first test. And here it is. Z equals X bar minus mu. And I'm going to put a little O there because that's representative often of the null hypothesis. Divided by sigma divided by square root of n. Okay? This is a formula that you've probably seen before, hopefully, because it's the same as the CLT. So it's not a new formula for us, okay? This value is the hypothesized value. This is the value that is seen in our HO and H1. Um, if I'm going to use this test, I need to know sigma. So what does that tell you about this test? You have to have the population standard deviation, okay? So often when they say we're doing the Z test for the mean, they put in parentheses Z, uh, that sigma is known. Because you're not going to be able to do this test unless you know sigma, because it's in the formula. Okay? I think that's all I have to tell you for us to do our first test. So every time we have a new hypothesis test, so every new class, I'll say, okay, here's our new hypothesis test, here's the distribution, here's the test value formula. Okay? All right. Are we ready? Let's try mine. A researcher reports that the average salary of assistant professors is more than 42,000. Okay, so example one. Researcher reports that the average salary of professors is more than 42,000. So I'm just gonna shorten this. The researcher saying the average salary is more than 42,000. I'm trying to clue us in on the keywords here. Average, so we're talking about the mean, more than 42,000. Great. A sample of 30 assistant professors had a mean salary of 43,260. Okay, so we had a sample of 30, so n is 30, we had a sample of 30, and their mean, I'm going to call that x bar because that's clearly coming from the sample. Okay, we had a sample of 30 professors. Their mean, x bar, was 43,260. All right. At alpha equals 0 0.05, test the claim. The standard deviation of the population is 5320. Okay. So at alpha equals 0 0.05, test claim. And it also says the population, it's very clear, it says the population standard deviation is 5320. Because we won't be able to do it otherwise we have, unless otherwise we have the population standard deviation, okay? Um, the next test, you won't have the population standard deviation and then you'll do the t-test, which is a little different. Okay, so let's go over everything that, that happened. Some person is claiming the average salary is more than 42,000. They took a sample, 30 professors, they got the mean of their sample, okay? They know the population standard deviation and they want to test the claim at alpha equals 0.05, test 
that the average salary is more than 42,000. Okay, it's very crucial that we clue in on all these cues and um, keywords. Okay, great. So let's start our test. Step one is to do what? There's five steps. Step one, state the null and alternative hypothesis, okay? What is the claim here? Average salary is more than 42,000. So right now you're gonna be stumped unless you know where does greater than go, right? Greater than 42,000, where does that have to go? In the bottom. In the bottom. Greater than 42,000. Why is that? It's not equal to anything. Right, there's always an equal sign in the null, okay? So greater than goes right here, then the opposite's gonna go here. And this is the claim. Okay, the mean salary is greater than 42,000. Great, if you can get through that, you've got step one right. It's so vital that you get step one right because everything's kind of a chain reaction from there, right? This tells me what type of test it is, okay? What type of test is it if it's greater than any alternative hypothesis? Well, right. right tail test. I'm gonna draw the Z distribution and I have a critical value. How much area in the right tail? What is alpha in this problem? 0.05. 0.05. So this area is 0.05. Okay. So I need to go to my Z distribution table and I need to figure out what Z value gives me 0.05 area in the right tail. Okay? So there's a couple of ways to do this, but if that area is 0.05, then this entire region here has to be 0.9500. So you can go into the Z distribution table and look for the closest thing you can to 0.9500. And 9500 is not in there and it's right in between two values, right? So what is my Z value here? 2.575. 1. 1.645, 1. 1. right? 1.645. Everybody see that? So 0 0.9500 is not in there, but what is in there is right in between 9495 and 9505. Okay, so that's 1.645. That is your critical value. Okay, and I'm done with step two. I state my hypothesis. I know it's right tailed. I put the area in the right tail, 0.05 area. I figure out that critical value. So your CV is 1.645. Okay, let's move to step three, test value. What is my formula for the test value for this first test? Z equals X bar minus mu naught divided by sigma divided by square root of n. Okay, now you're just plugging in stuff. X bar is 43,260. Mu, again, I like to circle that one or reference it as mu O because that's this number in the hypothesis. Sigma is given in the problem, 5320, and N is also given in the problem, 30. Okay, so plug in those values. So we have X bar, 43,260, minus 42,000, divided by Sigma, 5320, divided by the square root of the sample size, which was 30. Okay, I can't stress enough, you have to be super careful Plug that in your calculator, and be extremely careful with that fraction. So let's do this. We get 43,260 minus 42,000. Divided by 5320, divided by square root of 30. Okay, what did you guys get? 1.3. 1.3? Yeah, so if we go, well, I guess our book only goes two decimal places, but um, I don't know, I, I like getting in the habit of just doing four. So our Z value 
I'm going to go for values 1.2972. Okay, now I go back to this picture. Where is z equals 1.2972? Where is that approximately? It's either to the right or to the left. Is it to the right or to the left here? Yeah. To the left, right? Maybe right here somewhere? So my t value of 1.2972 is to the left. It is not in the critical region. It's not in the rejection region, okay? And that's all I need to know to go to my next step, step four. If my test value is not in the rejection region, then I do not reject HO. Do not reject HO, okay? So I go back up here. I'm not rejecting this. So I circle what I'm going with. I cross the line with what I'm not going with, okay? And then finally, my own words, rep, step five. What happens? Well, this person claimed the average salary is more than 42,000. We do not agree with that, okay? We said there's not enough information to show that this average salary is more than 42,000, okay? So something in your own words, not enough info to suggest the average salary is more than 42,000. Okay? Did we somewhat halfway kind of understand that? If so, great. We're doing this the rest of the semester. Every day it's like, okay, here's our new hypothesis test. Here's our new hypothesis test, okay? So please go back and go through this again and just keep reviewing it. That's all we're doing the rest of the semester. Okay.